In this video we're going to take a look at data analysis for DSC. So in terms of plotting the results, results can be plotted either versus temperature or time. So here we have difference in heat flow versus temperature or difference in heat flow versus time. And what's important is that we must show the direction for either an exothermic event or endothermic event or, or both. So we need an arrow somewhere on the thermogram um, showing us which direction is exothermic or endothermic or, or, or arrows for both of them. And that's because there's no convention over which way uh, is exothermic and which way is endothermic. Um, so we need to indicate that on our thermograms. OK, so in terms of enthalpy change of a process, um, if we just take a look at heat flow, difference in heat flow versus time, um, and ask the question, what is the enthalpy change associated with this process? Um, and just note, enthalpy is uh, enthalpy change is the amount of heat that's evolved or absorbed in the process. Okay, if we draw in a line uh, across here and fill that in, it's that. If we work out the area that's been filled in with blue, um, that will tell us the enthalpy associated with that thermal process. And if we just think for a moment about this example uh, where we've got a rectangle, now we wouldn't ever really get a result like this, but it's a useful illustration of why the area gives us the energy. So let's imagine we've got 15 millijoules per second high for this block and that we're 10 seconds wide. So the area equals 15 millijoules per second times 10 seconds. So we can work out the number quite easily, it's 150, so 15 times 10 it's 150 and then we can also work out the units millijoules per second times seconds well we're dividing by seconds here and then we're multiplying by seconds so the seconds cancel out and we're just left with millijoules so that just illustrates that this area is giving us the energy associated with the enthalpy change for that process okay now we're going to think about peak temperature so at what temperature does this peak occur and we can refer to a number of characteristic temperatures. So let's start off with Ti. This is the um, a, a temperature that we can use to sort of tell us about the peak. So first thing we do is to have an interpolated baseline. So we draw in a baseline and then we can work out Ti. This is the initial peak temperature. So this is where the peak just starts. Um, and the peak begins where the curve uh, measured values begins to deviate from the baseline. But if we zoom in on this, um, it won't just be a nice smooth line, there will be some noise in this, and it can be a little bit problematic to decide where the baseline should go. Um, so, you know, which portion of this do we take? We would need to average a bit of this and say, well, that's going to be the baseline, but do we average this bit or do we average a bit more of it? Um, and then how do we decide when this has left the baseline? I mean, it's away from the baseline here. Um, it's departed from it here. Do we decide based on a, a number of st standard deviations above and below for the part that we've averaged? So there's a number of questions here. It can be difficult to get reproducible results with this. Um, a better approach is to use the extrapolated onset temperature. So here we... Um, draw a tangent to the steepest part of the curve and we'd look at where that crosses the baseline. So this is the extrapolated peak onset temperature and it's a bit more reliable and rigorous. It's less prone to these problems in terms of deciding where the baseline should be. Um, and so just to summarise, we draw the line through the, the steepest section um, uh, of the ascending part of, of the peak and we look at where that intersects the baseline. Okay, next we have the peak temperature and this is the peak maximum temperature and this is simply where the difference between the baseline and the curve is maximum. So um, right here this is the biggest difference between the baseline and the peak so this is our T subscript P. Then we also have TC, the extrapolated peak completion temperature and it's very similar to T subscript E. We draw a tangent through the, the steepest part here and we look at where that crosses the baseline. And finally we have TF, the final peak temperature uh, where the, the curve returns to the baseline. 
again we've still got these issues around there's noise and how do we how do we decide where the baseline goes how do we decide when the, the curve has really returned to this uh, problems around noise so it's perhaps a little bit less reliable perhaps we need to rely more on T subscript C for the completion temperature which is using the extrapolated values okay so that is a summary of all those different things plotted in there and what's important is that you actually uh, report the temperature that you are using so typically we'd use TP but it's important in your report to actually say which temperature you or you're, you're, you're using or you're referring to and you might use a few of them okay glass transition we can use a very similar approach so we have a change in the baseline and we can talk about a number of characteristic temperatures again so we've got TGI so subscript GIG uh, referring to glass transition and I referring to initial temperature of the glass transition um, and what we've got is that the TGI is where this curve starts to depart from the baseline that we've drawn in from the flat portion of our trace. We can have the extrapolated onset temperature for the glass transition temperature so this is TGE um, and this is where we draw a tangent through the steepest part and look at where that crosses the baseline. We can also have TG a half, and this is when we're halfway between the baseline at the top and a baseline at the bottom. TGC, extrapolated completion temperature for the glass transition. So very similar idea to uh, what we had before. We've got the tangent drawn in, and we look at where that crosses the baseline. And then finally TGF, the final temperature of the glass transition, where the curve goes back to the baseline. A bit of a summary there, typically we'd use TG a half. So that video has been around data analysis for DSC. I hope you found that useful. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and thanks very much for watching.